Good morning. Morning, Your Honors. May it please the Court, Shannon Healy, Assistant Public Defender on behalf of Mr. Dominguez. If I may, I'd like to reserve two minutes, please, Judge. Yes, very well. Uh, the trial court erred in granting the state's peremptory challenge of Courtney Hunter without considering whether the reason offered by the state a juror, is genuine. A juror says she finds somebody, namely the defendant, attractive. She, yes, Judge. She indicated. And, and the state peremptory challenges that juror, and you say that that's wrong? I'm saying that the trial court's failure to conduct an inquiry into whether the state's reason was genuine was error. Um, what, if, court, what if she says, I'm his sister? And while that may be very apparent to be a genuine reason, that is a determination for the trial you court say to that make. She says, uh, we have different names, but we're, uh, we're siblings. And you, you're saying that if the trial judge doesn't conduct a hearing as to gender bias before a peremptory is used, we have a new trial. When it's clear that the court failed to consider... The, um, your, that's a hypothetical question. Yes, Your Honor. What is your answer to the hypothetical question? My, my answer is, if the court failed to... Uh, you cannot answer a hypothetical question which calls for yes or no with an if. I apologize, Your Honor. Okay. Yes. If yes, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if what? If the court fails to inquire, the court, the trial court, fails to inquire into the genuineness surrounding the state's reason for the strike, then the proper, then the step third so step you're, of Melbourne. You're, you're saying that you have to find out if the the state is not exercising the strike because it's a sister, but because she's a woman. The court needs to look at the circumstances. Well, yes, the court doesn't necessarily have to inquire, and I think maybe it's a poor choice of words. The court must consider Correct, the genuineness. Your Honor. And if it's clear on its face, then the court has considered it. Right. And then we have to determine whether, based upon the facts of this particular uh, voir dire examination, the court considered the genuineness. Correct, Your Honor. And I apologize if that was what Your Honor was referring to. I misunderstood. Correct. It's whether the court, whether the record is clear to this it's court. It's perfect. I mean, this is a this is a juror that the court could well have excused on its on its own. I mean, the 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 prejudice, the bias, or the, let alone the basis for a peremptory challenge. It's not even a cause challenge. Right, Your Honor. I, I mean, this is. This but, is silly. But ultimately, ultimately, the underlying rationale for, for the Melbourne protocol is to ensure that there is no improper discriminatory purpose for a peremptory exercise, right? Yes. So your position is that the judge had to articulate somehow on the record that he made a genuineness determination and not simply a race-neutral determination? Well, not necessarily. The court didn't necessarily have to use certain words. No certain words are necessary to conduct the genuineness inquiry. So why, why can't we read this record and the totality of the colloquy with the lawyers and, and find implicitly the court did make a genuineness determination? Because, Your Honor, I think the fact that the court said, and I'm going to quote what the court said, we're talking about Hunter. I'm going to allow the state's challenge. They could basically have whatever they want. I'm sorry, it's a race-neutral reason. They could basically have whatever they want as long as it's a race-neutral reason. Yes. If the court had stopped, at, if, when the court was considering the colloquy, and the court noted she found his tattoos to be interesting, if that's all the court had said and then allowed the strike, I think that would be more akin to an implicit genuineness analysis. So you're saying that the court, by articulating they can have whatever reason they want as long as it's race neutral shows a, a, a failure to consider that Melbourne requires an additional finding of genuineness. Precisely, Judge. I think that this is abundantly clear that the court only granted this strike because it was race neutral. Oh, that However is, that, apparent it may be. That is. Except they I, I were have to say disingenuous. They, except I have to say, I, I could say something worse than that. That is ridiculous. So, so, but in that, in the context of that conversation, they were actually talking about 
another juror, well, right? The defense counsel tried to compare Courtney Hunter right. to other jurors, but the court said, we're only talking about Hunter. I think that shows that the court failed to consider a relevant circumstance that she may have been similarly situated to other jurors. However apparent it may be to this court that this was exercised in a genuine manner. As noted by the Florida Supreme Court in Hayes, it's, not the, it's the duty of the trial court to conduct the inquiry. Thank, and, thank you informing, uh, for informing us concerning the law. I apologize, Your Honor. I don't mean um, any disrespect well, to the you, court. Well, you should apologize for this case. Your Honors, I do apologize. Uh, well, so you don't have to. I think you should. You obviously don't think you should because you brought it. Yes, so, Your Honor. We so what else would you have, what else do you think we should have found was required of the judge in order to comply with the dictates of Melbourne? I think a number of things could have been done. I think the court could have simply not said what he said. They basically get whatever they want as long as it's race neutral. I think the court could have gone into the comparison with other jurors. I think the court could have noted the racial makeup of the veneer, prior strikes exercised against other African Americans. Just something that would suggest that the only reason this wasn't granted was because it was race neutral. Well, he, the judge did say they could basically have. He didn't say they can have whatever they want as long as it's race neutral. And I don't care whether they're the offered reason is genuine or not. Obviously, if they had said, um, Judge, he's wearing a red shirt, and that's why we're striking him, that would fall outside the basically have whatever reason they want as, as long as it's race neutral, because admittedly having a red shirt is race neutral, correct? Yes. You're not suggesting the court would have allowed the challenge based on the wearing of a red shirt simply because of what the judge said on the record there, are you? No, Judge, but I just think the fact that this quote demonstrates the court only granted the strike solely because it was race neutral, failed to consider any relevant circumstances surrounding the strike, failed to, that means the court failed to comply with the third step of Melbourne. And but on its face, couldn't we determine that this was not a pretext? I mean, because it was such an obvious grounds for challenge and there was nobody else similarly uh, situated. In fact, the only juror that defense could point to was someone who said that the defendant looked like a bouncer. I mean, which was clearly a very different type of situation. This was not an infatuation situation. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, couldn't we from the face of this record determine it was clearly not a pretext and that the trial court must have considered that because the trial court is listening to the entire voir dire? Again, Your Honor, I think that would be perfectly fine if the court didn't say what it said in this case. Um, right. Unfortunately, we have this quote. I think that shows the court failed to comply with the third step of Melbourne, and that's why we're respectfully asking that this court reverse and remand for a new trial. And how do you spell your last name, Ms. Healy? H-E-A-L-Y. Thank you very much, Ms. Healy. Thank you, Your Honors. We'll save you a minute for rebuttal. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. May it please the court. Shane Burnham, Assistant Attorney General, appearing on behalf of the state of Florida. It seems that this court understands the state's position, and if there are no further questions. I have a question. Yes. Ms. Healy says that but for the court's last statement in that colloquy, this might well be an implicit genuineness finding. But the court did say they can basically have whatever they want as long as it's a race-neutral reason. Why doesn't that show or, or show some evidence of the court's failure to consider the genuineness prong of Melbourne? Well, the trial court's statement that this is a race, gender neutral, or a race, race neutral, neutral reason, reason. Yes. Um, and therefore the state could have whatever they want, that statement alone would not vitiate the fact that a genuineness analysis did occur. Well, where, does it, where can we glean from the record that the court made a genuineness finding? Well, we may not agree with Melbourne. We may not agree that it's any longer necessary, but Melbourne does set out a specific step that requires a court, in essence, to make a credibility finding of the attorney exercising the peremptory, that the court believes the attorney is doing it for the stated reason and not for any other reason, right? Right. Um, Even if it is race neutral, there still has to be that finding that it's not being done pretextually, that it's being done for the genuine reason offered by the the attorney. Correct. So and where in the record can we glean that? Well, in this case, the state offered its race-neutral reason. Defense counsel objected and said, I would argue this is not a genuine reason. This is the third black female that has been struck from the panel. And therefore, the trial court's 
granting of the peremptory challenge would implicitly show that the court considered the reason and found it not to be, to actually be a genuine reason. Furthermore, during the, the discussion, the court says she found his tattoos to be interesting. So that's really it right there. In, in other words, it's not something that, it's not a reason that was not self-evident to the court. It was something that the court not only um, saw or heard himself, but then, I guess, confirmed that what the state was saying factually was indeed correct. That is what happened, that she found his tattoos interesting. Yes, that's So correct. you're suggesting that because defense counsel previously argued judges isn't genuine and the judge says, yes, she did find his tattoos to be interesting, that that implicitly reveals a genuineness determination. Correct. And I also wanted to point out this court, this court's prior case in Carrillo is exactly on point. The state there sought to strike a male juror because of the juror's question regarding the death penalty and concern that a convicted felon would not be a reliable witness. And there the trial court said that's the state's eighth and nothing more. Um, this court held, and I quote, because the trial court heard the state's gender neutral explanation, allowed defense counsel to argue its position, and then granted the peremptory strike, we are satisfied that a genuineness inquiry was indeed conducted. And that's exactly what happened in this case. And would you concede this is probably not an example of best practices for trial court engaged in a Melbourne analysis? Don't don't concede that. I don't I don't concede that. Um, don't you concede should, that. You should concede because that. yes, you should. Very poor lawyering. True. I will point don't, out that. Don't concede that because if you concede that, then my statement about going back into every transcript <laughs> will fade into insignificance because we will. <laughs> Uh, a judge will have to be a saint is not is not enough god and never and not, and not a word will not be able to be slipped out by mistake or omitted by mistake and no trial will ever stand signed kevin emus <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's best not to comment on that one. <laughs> right, right. Um, in conclusion, we respectfully ask that you affirm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Just very briefly, Your Honors, um, the Creo case, which I know Your Honor Judge Rothenberg sat on, um, there was a bit more of an ensuing discussion with the court regarding the state's reason for the strike in that case. I realize it's not the biggest distinction in the world, but it is one that we are relying on. Alonzo, which is also cited in the state's brief from this court, in that case, the court said it's race neutral, I'm going to allow it, but the court did engage in a comparison with that juror and another juror and found they weren't similarly situated. So based on those distinctions um, and the fact that the courts in those, in those cases cases didn't say what the court did regarding the race neutral reason in this case. Um, we'd say they're distinguishable and ask again that this court reverse and remand for a new trial. Very Thank good. you very much. Thank you, Thank you both.